Do you see what the fall of man did? It made us so self-centered that we can't love, we can just need. And the highest feeling we have is called love. But the people we say we love, we can have a fallout with in a moment if things don't go our way. We'd have four children and have memories of great honeymoons and a sweet cruise and a honeymoon suite and trash each other with our words in a week. Oh, it's okay if I'm talking about this. I don't even know where I'm going right now, but this thing's on me. Let's just expose it. Selfishness. The biggest lie on the planet, the most wretched thing on the earth is that men wake up selfish when they're created for God's image and called to love. Jesus is so serious about restoring this truth that he said, I'll come and model it. We were made for God's image. He said, I'll tell you what, when you see me, you'll see him. I'll come and live and show you what it looks like to live in the Father. And he didn't say, sing to me, pray to me when you're overwhelmed. He said, follow me. And he said, the things I do, you will do. And he ain't just talking about miracles. <laughs> Jesus so selfless. It's incredible. He's God. Like he's God. And he said, I'll become a man. And I won't just become a man. I'll become a servant. And I'll come and be a servant to the point of death. Why? Because love can't stand them dying when they're created to live. They ain't doing nothing right. They ain't doing one thing to deserve life. They're doing everything to deserve death. But that ain't who they are. I know who I created them to be and I know who they can be. When I live inside of them, I'll pay the price to make it right. Oh, if that don't get your hair standing up. <laughs> this is not a movie. It's not a story. It's not a child's book. Christmas isn't a time of year. It's a truth that transforms our lives. You be careful this morning to guard your heart in this life. Don't let this one life that you have that's called a gift slip by in animosity, a wrong attitude, self-centeredness, unbelief. Please don't do that. Awake to righteousness. Arise and shine. And let Christ give you life. Yeah? You don't even have time. I promise you, you don't have time for an attitude that's detrimental. You don't have time to be whatever. You don't have to say, well, it hurts. Wonder if God said you hurt him. Wonder if God said it hurts. Wonder if God said it hurts and there's no Jesus on the cross. Wonder if Jesus drops the cross on the way to Golgotha. Says, I've had enough. How much can one man take? Barabbas, are you kidding me? What a slap in the face. I raise the dead. He kills the man. I'm bringing peace. He causes conspiracy. And you want to choose him and kill me? I don't think so. I've had enough. But that ain't Jesus. Because that ain't love. And you think I'm going to have an attitude like that when I see this? Not today, friend. The light has come. <laughs> I get it now. I'm finally free. I'm finally free from me. I thought you were my problem. I thought if God tweaked you, life would be better. Oh, I always thought that. I was so proud and arrogant. I thought you had to be the problem. I thought if God would just change you a bit, life would go smoother. But I realized I was my worst enemy. I was the biggest problem on the planet because I was living for me and my life was zero. And it was always at the expense of you. See, love lays down its life. Anything that's not love lives at the expense. When you put pressure on another person with your attitude, you're living at the expense of their value and destiny. When you put demands and needs on people, when you cop an attitude and you're only okay if they do what you want, that is self-centeredness to the core. If your disposition is decided by others and their actions, you're deceived. How's that for straight talk? <laughs> because Jesus never let men change who he is. Because you can't change love because it never fails because it doesn't seek its own. So it doesn't have a loophole or a weakness. 
Man, this is really good preaching in your house this morning. <laughs> Figure if you fly all the way here and give me a mic, I better make it good. I ain't even got much time. I even feel a little pressed, but I'm doing all right, ain't I? <sighs> I'm 25 years saved, and I have to try to settle down to communicate the convictions of my heart. He loves me so much. He loves who I am in him. Like he knows what I look like when he's in me and I'm surrendered and he believes it's worth giving his life for. I'm not talking about forgiveness and Holy Ghost goosebump and <laughs> drinking and thank you, Lord. And then being ticked off at work. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about communion, co-union, oneness, fellowship. All that he is is mine and all that is mine is his. One plus one is one. I'm talking about covenant. I'm talking about I didn't give you my heart. I gave you my life. I gave you my will. I gave you my motives. I gave you my perspective. And you made all things new. And the man that was died. So there is no looking back. And the man that is is in him. You get it? <laughs> That's Christianity. That's all Christianity has ever been. We've made it bless me, provide for me, protect me, and if my prayers don't get answered, I got issues. We're up and high if everything's going the way we're believing. And if not, we got so many questions, we don't even know who God is anymore, so we can't have intimacy, we can't get close, and we never bear fruit to him. You don't get pregnant if you don't get close. <laughs> I'm so pregnant. <laughs> you all see me. <laughs> see, what's amazing is when you've been with him, then everything that you give birth to looks like its father. Yeah. Stand up, man. Stand up. Turn around. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Live illustration. <laughs> Seriously. See, it's so intense what I'm saying. It cost him his life, but God doesn't. It's not like, oh, it's not like, get with it, people. It's, it's that little laugh times, that little, that's his Holy Ghost anesthesia, so you come through the surgery well. <laughs> come on, God wants you convicted by this, but not overwhelmed by it. God wants light to shine in your heart and take a second look and say, wait a minute, man, what am I really giving myself to? Where is my attitudes? How vulnerable I am I to these lies? How available have I made myself? Am I letting one person decide who I am and how I am and their name's not Jesus? Or is he really Lord? Oh, this good Sunday morning quick hit. Bam. This is why we gather to stay on course. This is why you got Christ Chapel Sunday morning. It's not because that's the church I go to. Oh, I think Jeremy's cool. You know, Sam, and she's so awesome in her voice. Oh, she just, ah. That's what people do. And they join the club. Until something doesn't go the way they hope. And they look for another club. <laughs> we're not part of a club. We're, we're not doing church. We are her. And we're the only hope of Jesus being made known. And we haven't represented him well at large. Ezekiel said it this way. My people went out among the nations and misrepresented me and profaned my name everywhere they went. Totally misrepresented the, the purpose. Of being my people. So, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw them all back. I'm going to make them one. I'm going to put a new heart in them. I'm going to put a new spirit in them. And I'm not going to do it for their sake. I'm going to do it for my great name. Do you understand you've been given the honor to live for his great name? Do you understand that when you're done wrong. And you don't live done wrong. You're manifesting his name. 
But when you're done wrong and you were done wrong, then you reveal you do not know what he paid for and you don't understand why you're a Christian. Come on, that's just straight. Because you never put on what you're going through because you're wearing what he went through. You're already dressed. You're already clothed in righteousness. Miss Hope, you already have the garments of salvation. <laughs> They were made for you. They fit you perfect. Don't you go putting on something funky that don't fit and match. And don't look like you in him or him in you. Girl, you look good. 